I'm Terry with Prepped and Polished in South Natick, Massachusetts. Today I'm going to share some strategies with you to help you solve sentence completions on the SAT. Sentence completions are part of the critical reading section along with reading comprehension passages. Sentence completions are multiple choice questions that test your ability to see how parts of a sentence relate. You have to choose the word or words that when inserted into the sentence best fits the meaning of the sentence as a whole. There will be 19 sentence completion questions divided into three groups of 8, 6, and 5. Within each group, the level of difficulty goes from easy, which is kind of a warm-up, to hard. About half the questions, uh, there will be one word missing, and the other half there will be two words missing. Mastery of sentence completions hinges on your understanding of sentences logic or main idea, your vocabulary level, and applying four specific strategies that I'm going to introduce to you today. Strategy number one. Use logic to predict the missing word or words. You can cover the answer choices and anticipate what the missing words might be. Let's look at an example. Only if the number of applicants continues to blank can the admissions committee justify offering more scholarships in order to increase the number of applicants. Well, using logic, if the admissions committee, they need to justify offering more scholarships to increase applications, they can only do that if the number of applicants is decreasing or dwindling. So now let's look at our words and see if there's anything that would fit there. We have mushroom, expand, plummet, satiate, virgin. Plummet, choice C, is the only choice that means going down. Mushroom, expand, and virgin mean to grow, so we can get rid of those. Satiate means to satisfy, so plummet is the word that would fit in that blank. Strategy number two. Find the clue or clues in the sentence. There's always a clue or clues that point you in the direction of the best answer. And it really helps to underline keywords and phrases. Let me show you with an example. After just one hour of study, Tyler unrealistically expected a blank rise in his test scores and was reluctant to work longer hours for steady blank score improvements. Well, after just one hour of study, Tyler unrealistically expected maybe a huge rise in his test scores and was reluctant to work longer hours for steady, a word that goes with steady because of the comma, score improvements, maybe steady gradual score improvements. Let's look at the choices. Repetitive swift, sudden interminable, trivial gradual, steep incremental, significant rapid. Well, he did expect a steep rise and he was reluctant to work longer hours for steady incremental score improvements. Incremental means slow and steady. Um, none of the others work. That's your answer right there, D. Definition clues are huge. A definition clue occurs when a portion of the sentence that's offset by a comma, a semicolon, or a colon actually defines the word that will be in the blank. Let me show you an example. Professor Hardy told his class that since the Industrial Revolution, the global warming trend has been blank. Human disregard for the environment precipitated many of the alterations in the Earth's climate zones. Well, here we have the semicolon. Part in red shows that human carelessness caused many changes in the Earth's climate zones. It was bound to happen. And so we need a word there, uh, something like bound to happen. Inevitable, malevolent, reciprocal, stagnant, guileless. Well, inevitable means bound to happen. And just for the record, malevolent means wishing evil. Reciprocal is equally shared. Stagnant means sluggish, and guileless means being honest. Those are words that could appear on the SAT sentence completions. Supporting and contrasting links, trigger words, provide important clues to the missing 
words that you're looking for. Let's look at some examples. Supporting links are words like also, since, and, not only, but also. Since he lost his job, he has felt so rejected and blank that he refused to leave the house. We know that since he lost his job, he's very unhappy, and, as we said, is a clue. We need a word related to rejected, you know, depressed maybe. And now we look at the examples calm, complacent, cheerful, despondent, hopeful, and D, despondent, would be the best one, close to depressed. Let's look at contrasting links. Although, despite, however, instead, but, yet, and rather. Despite its stated goals of fostering productivity and hard work, the company promotes many unproductive and blank employees. While a contrast is set up in this sentence, the company encourages productivity and hard work, yet promotes many unproductive and, there's and again, maybe lazy employees. And let's look at the choices. Creative, discontented, independent, lackadaisical, meritorious. Well, lackadaisical means lazy. That's the word we would want right there. So that certainly, those supporting and contrasting links help you find the right words. Another important clue that will help you are cause and effect links. Words like because, if, therefore, yet, rather. Let's look at an example and see how this could work for you. Because Brady neither blank nor defends either side in the labor dispute, both parties admire his journalistic blank. Well, Brady doesn't really take sides. He's sort of on the fence. And the parties admire how neutral he is. Let's look at the examples. Criticizes vitality, attacks neutrality, confronts aptitude, dismisses flair, and protects integrity. Well, we can see that B would work. Um, Brady neither attacks nor defends either side in the labor dispute because they admire his neutrality. There's your answer. Strategy number three. Determine the connotation of the missing word. Is it positive or negative? This is especially helpful on difficult long sentences. Let me show you an example. The coach's attitude toward the team was blank rather than blank, and we were all pleasantly surprised. Well, if we were pleasantly surprised, and let's under that because that's a clue, if we were pleasantly surprised, his attitude was positive rather than negative. Let's look at the choices. Compatible stingy, negative disdainful, extroverted withdrawn, sinister recalcitrant, malevolent frank. Well, B, the first word negative, sinister in D, and malevolent are all negative words. So we know it can't be those to start us out. And we're left with compatible stingy and extroverted withdrawn. A doesn't make sense. He was compatible rather than stingy. So we don't want that. He was extroverted rather than withdrawn, and we were all pleasantly surprised. Perfect. Strategy number four. Plug in the answer choices and eliminate. This is particularly good with long, difficult sentences. Double blanks. If one blank doesn't make sense, you can eliminate. Use all the clues that I've shown you to eliminate. And guess intelligently when you get down to 50-50. Here's a good example of all of the above. Dr. Rand's lecture on art, while detailed and scholarly, focused blank on the pre-modern. Some students may have appreciated his specialized knowledge, but those with more blank interests may have been disappointed. That's a lot to take in. But his lecture was detailed and scholarly and he folk, it was focused entirely, maybe entirely on the pre-modern. Some students may have liked that, but, and that shows an opposite, those with more maybe varied interests may have been disappointed. Now the answer choices are quite difficult, literally medieval, completely antediluvian. Both of those mean old-fashioned, so we can get rid of that. The students don't want, they don't have old-fashioned interests. 
prodigiously germane, voluminously creative, utterly eclectic. Well, that e seems to be saying exactly what we need. Dr. Rand's lecture focused utterly on the pre-modern, but students with varied or eclectic interests may have been disappointed. The others don't work, so this is precisely what we're looking for, choice E. Here's a bonus tip for you. Remember to always read the sentence after you've plugged in the answer choice or choices to see if it makes sense. Well, I hope these strategies will help you to solve sentence completions on the SAT. Keep improving your vocabulary. As you could see, having a good vocabulary certainly helps. However, if that's not your strongest suit, apply these four tried and true strategies that I showed you today. They will help you to get your best score on that section, sentence completion section of the SAT. Good luck.